August 23rd, 1998, my 10th birthday. I receive a large rectangular shaped present which I dare to hope is the thing that I have wanted more than anything for the last two years. I rip it open, and my reaction, well, needless to say, is akin to something like this. <laughs> So yeah, it was the single greatest birthday gift I had ever received. And when I first gazed upon that wondrous black and red box containing the newest Nintendo console, needless to say, I was overjoyed to jump into a new 64-bit world where the games were bigger, better, and more badass. Okay, maybe by today's standards, a good many of the Nintendo 64's graphics look kinda like some badly done origami. But it was cool at the time! For me, the Nintendo 64 was my first exposure to 3D polygonal graphics, and when I first fired up that copy of Super Mario 64 that I had received with my Nintendo 64, my mind was completely blown. The game looked way more vibrant and immersive than anything I had played on my Super Nintendo, and I was instantly hooked. Needless to say, I love the N64. So why not sit back and join me as I explore some of the greatest titles for a console that really helped define a brand new generation of gaming. Let's go! Number 20, Pokemon Snap. Okay, while taking pictures of Pokemon doesn't on paper sound like the most exciting premise, Pokemon Snap was released at a time when Pokemania was in full force. None of us had ever seen Pokemon rendered in a full 3D game before, and the novelty of it was pretty awesome at the time. Despite that, who knew that taking pictures could be so much fun? It's fun to try and capture Pokemon in the perfect pose, and get kudos from good old Professor Oak. You can lure Pokemon in with apples, or beat them senseless with pester balls to get them to come out from hiding, just at the right time to catch that perfect shot. The game is vibrant, with varied environments and lots of Pokemon from Gen 1 to discover. And despite it being on the short side, it's got tons of replay value and just so much fun. Number 19. Resident Evil 2 While not my favorite port of Resident Evil 2, the Nintendo 64 version still retains the creepy, dark feel of the original version. While the controls are more than a little clunky, the gameplay makes up for it and is fun and frantic at times. The dark atmosphere, I have to use this voice, the dark atmosphere just seeps through the TV screen as you fight hordes of T-virus infected zombies and other monsters in Raccoon City. And the story is compelling from the start. Who doesn't love a good horror zombie story? Graphically, the game looks great on the N64, and still features the FMV cutscenes found on the PlayStation version, making the game a technical feat at the time for compressing all of the content found on that original PS1 disc to the N64 cartridge. While perhaps not the definitive version, it's still a blast to play on the N64. Number 18, Diddy Kong Racing! The first of several Rare games on the list, Diddy Kong Racing is basically Rare's answer to Mario Kart. Featuring Diddy Kong, future Rare stars Banjo and Conker, as well as a whole batch of new characters, Rare takes the whole concept of a kart racing game and turns it on its tail. In all honesty, Diddy Kong Racing has a lot more to offer in terms of content than Mario Kart, and is perhaps the superior game in a lot of ways. Featuring new modes such as two adventure modes and various challenges, Diddy Kong Racing feels really fresh and original, and with the added bonus of different vehicles such as a hovercraft and a plane, the game feels a bit more fleshed out than other racing games of the time. It's super replayable and a blast with friends too. Rare really ruled the roost on the N64, and this is far from their last appearance on this list. Number 17, Mario Party 1, 2, and 3. Is it cheap to include three games in one here? Look, the original Mario Party started it all and has a load of memorable boards and minigames. Mario Party 2 had cool costumes, and Mario Party 3 had the addition of the badass duel mode, as well as the addition of everyone's favorite underdogs, Princess Daisy and Waluigi. While obviously all three games are very similar, it's largely the same idea. You and three buddies, party it up, Mario style, dude! With loads of different minigames to master, boards with various unique challenges, and later other modes like the fantastic, aforementioned duel mode in Mario Party 3. Mario Party is perhaps the ultimate multiplayer experience for a console that largely introduced the idea of four players. Just watch out for that dastardly Koopa King and his cheap ass roulette. You never do get that 100 star present, do you? Number 16, Pokemon Stadium and Pokemon Stadium 2. I'm more than happy to once again cheat on this list by including a couple games in one. In the case of Pokemon Stadium and its sequel, you're talking about two remarkably similar games. 
only really separated by the fact that the Johto games included more Pokemon. The first game was really exciting to play, as it was the first game to include full 3D Pokemon battles, which only became more expansive in the sequel. Both games also included stuff like the Game Boy Tower, which allowed the player to play their Game Boy games and transfer Pokemon onto the N64, which was super cool and fun at the time. Surprisingly though, the minigames that were included were possibly even more fun to play with friends than even the battling was. They were super addictive, diverse little games that you just can't stop playing. Overall, the Pokemon Stadium games are really fun, and as long as you had one of the Game Boy games, it really enhanced the experience with the included transfer pack. Number 15, F-Zero X. This is a game that, had I actually played it sooner, may have made it higher on my list. The F-Zero series has long been one of Nintendo's overshadowed lesser franchises, and sadly now in the 2020s is all but forgotten by Nintendo themselves. That said, to me, this is one of the very strongest racing games of the era, with super smooth looking visuals and fast paced action. I think what impressed me most from a modern standpoint was how well the frame rate holds up while the gameplay gets super fast and frantic, unlike another game that I'll mention later. F-Zero X's music is also killer, and the heavy rock tunes accompany the frenzied action and flashy visuals really well. In my opinion, a game that has really stood the test of time better than most of its contemporaries. Number 14, Yoshi Story. When Yoshi made the jump from the Super Nintendo, it was one of the few side-scrolling platformers to actually make it to 3D. While for sure it falls quite short from its predecessor, Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island on the Super Nintendo, Yoshi's Story is still a fun little platformer that has its own unique style and feel. Going with a storybook type of aesthetic and theme, the different levels open up as if pages from a book, and the aesthetics look like cozy cutout fabrics and paper, a staple of the franchise. While the game has gotten flack for being really easy and short, I actually think these criticisms really play to the strength of the game. Yoshi's Story is meant to be a fun, casual game, and while not perfect, I think it's still a really solid platformer. Number 13, Perfect Dark. As a sort of spiritual successor to the smash hit that was GoldenEye 007, Perfect Dark was Rare's attempt to expand upon the groundbreaking formula of GoldenEye. Starring Joanna Dark and set in a futuristic cyberpunk world, Perfect Dark featured a more story-heavy game with cutscenes and voice acting. It also took advantage of the multiplayer split-screen with up to 8 players. The game's visuals look stunning for the time, and while sure the polygonal graphics may look a bit dated by today's standards, something that could really be a criticism of any of these games, the environments, and particularly the music, still feels varied and immersive. Perfect Dark is a fantastic game, one of Rare's best on the console. Number 12, Kirby 64, The Crystal Shards. This might be my favorite Kirby game. There's just something about Kirby 64 that really does it for me. The cutesy visuals and story, the 2.5D platforming, which allowed for a seamless transition for the little pink puffball to 3D, the power-ups, the levels, it all just works for some reason. Perhaps the coolest aspect of the game is the ability to combine power-ups and enemies that Kirby swallows to unleash more powerful moves. There's all kinds of fun ways to combine them to make Kirby transform into everything from a refrigerator to a firecracker. The boss fights are really fun and unique, and surprisingly challenging for the more amateur-friendly player that Kirby games tend to attract. Overall, Kirby's first foray into 3D is a delightful and fun little platformer. Number 11, Mario Golf and Mario Tennis. The N64 is really where the whole Mario Sports franchise truly began with the first Mario Golf and Mario Tennis. To me personally, Mario Golf is the much stronger and more interesting game of the two. But I thought this spot would be good for both games, since they are both more than worthy to make this list. While different experiences, both games are interesting and fun in their own ways. I can't tell you how many countless hours I spent hitting the links in Mario Golf, and I really just love the way the controls are set up with everything from the wind speed and direction to each character's specific shot affecting where the ball lands. It's truly a hard game to really master, and I enjoy the challenge of it, as well as all of the characters, especially those weird human characters that aren't really ever seen again. And definitely Harry, he's wonderful. While Mario Golf is probably the better game to play solo, Mario Tennis is the much better multiplayer experience. It's really fun going back and forth across the court with a friend. And in the rare times when I've had the chance to play with three other people, well, it's just the best kind of fun chaos. 
Also, Mario Tennis really gets bonus points for being the first game to introduce our favorite purple-clad trickster. Come on, guys, you know him. The great Waluigi. Wah! Number 10, The Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask. Okay, I admit it. I was never really a fan of this game after having a pretty negative experience with it as a child. That said, after a couple of subsequent plays in recent years, I have to say that The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask is truly one of the best Zelda games. As a direct sequel to Ocarina of Time and taking from that world, Majora's Mask is a decidedly darker affair. With its grim storyline about the moon falling from the sky, dooming the land of Termina to an apocalypse. Yeah, that's quite dark. Interestingly, although Link stays young throughout the whole game, like Ocarina of Time, time travel is a key element of the game, perhaps even more so, with the entire storyline taking place within the confines of three days. This forces the player to having to complete different tasks at different times of the day, and frequently having to play the Song of Time to return to the beginning and start a new task. While I admittedly still am not a huge fan of this element of the game, I recognize it was incredibly unique for the time. That aside, Majora's Mask is a really interesting game in the Zelda universe. No game is darker or has a more unique world. Collecting the various masks with their transformations and abilities are, is really interesting, and I just love the music, aesthetic, and well, the overall strangeness that is Majora's Mask. Number 9, Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Oh, f***. Ah yes, Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Is there an edgier, raunchier, and more depraved game for the Nintendo 64? Although a complete bomb when it was released toward the tail end of the N64's life, Conker's Bad Fur Day is retroactively considered one of the best rare games for the Nintendo 64. This game is just nuts. Get this, a protagonist that's basically a drunken squirrel, a giant boss made entirely of, well, poop, a level where your objective is to get a B2, <clears throat> a flower, and more insanity is what makes Conquer, at the very least, a game that's hard to forget. Aside from the novelty of its much edgier image, in contrast to Nintendo's usual squeaky clean family friendly image, Conquer is just a great 3D platformer that has a funny and unique story. The multiplayer mode is a blast too, with tank and war minigames being my particular favorites. Even over 20 years later, it still kind of amazes me that this game even made it to the N64. But boy am I glad it did. Number 8, Mario Kart 64. Although in some ways I find Mario Kart 64 a little hard to go back to these days, there's really no denying that it was one of my most played games of the Nintendo 64 era. Mario Kart 64 really brought the fast-paced, fun action of Super Mario Kart into the 64-bit era, and sometimes really fast-paced at that, given the frame rate issues it tends to have. With a ton of brand new courses such as personal favorites like Bowser's Castle, Wario Stadium, and Sherbert Land, Mario Kart 64 is a fantastic thrill ride. The Grand Prix and Verse modes are of course classic Mario Kart fare, while the balloon battle also returns, though this time with a 4 player option. This is perhaps the best battle mode of any Mario Kart game, and is always a blast to play. While yes, one could argue that subsequent games like Mario Kart Wii and Mario Kart 8 have surpassed Mario Kart 64, it's still a great game, and a real thrill to play when it was released. Number 7, GoldenEye 007. Of any games on this list, Rare's GoldenEye 007 is perhaps the most groundbreaking. Almost single-handedly revolutionizing the modern first-person shooter formula that dominates the current landscape, GoldenEye 007 was a landmark game for the Nintendo 64, featuring an innovative four-player split-screen and consequently one of the best multiplayer experiences of the era. GoldenEye is still impressive through a modern scope. While I'd personally argue that the main story is nothing super special, I've also never really been a big James Bond fan. The mechanics and controls hold up really well by today's standards, and it's just so much fun to play with friends. The game has a lot to offer in terms of different weapons and locations to choose from, and the music is just totally badass. I mean, <laughs> just listen to it. GoldenEye remains a classic that belongs among the pantheon of games from the 64-bit era. Number 6, Star Fox 64. A barrel roll. Does anyone ever get sick of that? I mean, come on. Look, Star Fox 64 to me is just one of those timeless games that I think about any time the N64 is mentioned. In many ways, Star Fox 64 perfected what Nintendo was trying to do with the original Super Nintendo game. 
However, both the N64 controller and better graphics really brought that vision home in my view. The space battles are bigger and more intense, the action even more fast-paced, and the voice acting is one of those few instances during this era where I really feel it adds to the game. Who could forget Fox's determined stoicism, Falco's sassy attitude, Peppy's wise old-timer drawl, and Slippy's... Mm, yeah, Slippy. The music, whether the fanfare that plays during the end of a level or the intense up-tempo stuff that plays during a boss fight, just adds to that feeling of being in an epic space battle. Truly a game that defined the Nintendo 64. Number 5. Super Smash Brothers! Before 1999, the idea that there would be a game where Nintendo's biggest stars would get together and beat the living polygons out of each other would have sounded more far-fetched than, well, a far-fetched. But that's exactly what happened right at the end of the century, during the latter part of the console's life. Created by the maestro himself, Mr. Masahiro Sakurai, and developed by HAL Laboratories, Super Smash Bros. was really a game-changer in both the world of fighting games and Nintendo games. Featuring eight iconic Nintendo characters and four secret ones, nine stages, and various different modes, Super Smash Bros. pushed the idea of a 2.5D fighting game to its limits, with a plethora of different button combinations to execute moves, stage hazards, items, and fast-paced and competitive multiplayer. Super Smash Bros. delivers on all fronts, whether it's the varied stages representing Nintendo's biggest franchises including Mario, Zelda, Metroid, and Pokemon, to the excellent music, addictive bonus modes like Break the Targets and Board the Platforms, and well, I mean, I could just keep naming stuff, man, it's Super Smash Bros. The series has come a really long way since its humble beginnings on the N64, but the original Super Smash Bros. was really the perfect template for the rest of the series to draw from. I mean, come on, who doesn't love to smash? Number 4, Banjo-Kazooie, and a little honorable mention to Banjo-Tooie. While GoldenEye 007 is no doubt the most groundbreaking rare game for the Nintendo 64, to me, the greatest is undoubtedly their answer to Super Mario 64, Banjo-Kazooie. With Banjo-Kazooie, Rare took the idea of a hub world 3D platformer to the next level, in some ways really outdoing the precedent that Super Mario 64 set. With 10 levels set in a huge hub world chock full of places to explore and a lot of goodies to collect, Banjo-Kazooie really has a lot to offer in one little cartridge. To me, the big strength of Banjo-Kazooie is not only in its excellent controls and addictive platforming, but in the game's personality and humor, which I think really reflects largely on what the team at Rare were going for. Whether it's Gruntilda's silly limericks or Kazooie's sassy one-liners, the game's dialogue is often hilarious and full of personality. Paired with Grant Kirkhope's exquisite soundtrack, you really have one of the greatest 3D platformers ever created. I'm also going to give a nod to its sequel, Banjo-Tooie, here as well, as I feel that the two games are strikingly similar, though Banjo-Tooie offers bigger levels, more exploration, a multiplayer mode, and lots more. Both games embody some of the very best game design that the Nintendo 64 has to offer. Number 3, Paper Mario. This one is definitely a big personal preference for sure. I'm sure there's lots of people who will complain about how high I've ranked Paper Mario, but just relax. First of all, it's my list. And secondly, I think I can back up my opinion pretty well by making the case that the original Paper Mario has held up better than perhaps any other N64 game. The aesthetic choices made for Paper Mario is largely the reason why, graphically, it doesn't look nearly as dated as its contemporaries. The paper characters, with their 2D design and the overall toy box look of the game, have held up well, but it's not just the aesthetic choices that make Paper Mario one of the best Nintendo 64 games. Everything from the excellent soundtrack coupled with the varied and unique environments, the gameplay featuring the classic Mario RPG style timed hit and FP system, something I so desperately wish the series at large would return to, and most of all, the absolutely stellar story make Paper Mario, simply put, a freaking epic adventure. Perhaps it's my affinity for its predecessor, Super Mario RPG for the Super Nintendo, that informs my opinion at least slightly on this game, but it's much more than that. The characters, particularly the various partners Mario teams up with, Peach, Bowser, are really memorable and have some amazing moments. The game is also great at not taking itself too seriously, and I think the writing is just chock full of humor and lots of epic scenarios. Paper Mario is, in my opinion, not just one of the best N64 games, but one of the best Mario games, period. At this point, let's be realistic. 
You all know what games are going to make it to the top two spots on this list. But which game will be number one? While you guys mull it over, here's a bunch of great games that didn't quite make the list. Number 2, The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. I mean really, is there a more epic adventure on the Nintendo 64? Ocarina of Time is a crowning achievement in not just the Zelda universe and Nintendo, but in gaming as a whole. For those of us who played it around the time it was released, it's really hard to convey just how sprawling and epic this adventure felt the first time you entered Hyrule Field. Even now, having recently streamed this entire game on my channel, I can honestly say the game is still captivating with loads of elements that make it truly one of the best adventure games of all time. From the various different areas such as the Deku Forest, Death Mountain, and Zora Lake, to the truly epic soundtrack that just immerses the player right from the starting screen, to the large scale and emphasis on exploration, Ocarina of Time is the complete package. The story feels like the best kind of epic high fantasy, with loads of memorable characters, sequences, and challenges. The game's controls were super innovative as well, with its Z-targeting system, inventory customization, and freedom of movement. Ocarina of Time, even through a modern lens, really holds up today, and while sure the series has gone on to much bigger and better things, there's just no denying that Ocarina of Time was absolutely integral in revolutionizing the way that not just the Zelda series has evolved over the years, but adventure and exploration games as a whole. Simply put, Ocarina of Time is a hoot hoot hoot. Number one, Super Mario 64. And so we come to my number one pick for the greatest Nintendo 64 game. While yes, a game like Ocarina of Time is certainly worthy of the spot, to me, Super Mario 64 is really the most essential, memorable, and most importantly, most fun game for the Nintendo 64. To satisfy the nostalgic aspect of this for a second, Super Mario 64 was the game that came with my Nintendo 64 and the first one that I played. And while it was my very first exposure to 3D polygonal graphics, as well as the idea of a 3D adventure platformer, there's just something about the actual gameplay of Super Mario 64 that has always captivated me, and continues to do so, quite frankly. This game has loads of exploration and secrets to find. Whether stars hidden somewhere in the castle walls, or different little corners of the various levels to explore, Super Mario 64's replayability is seemingly endless. I found as a kid, even when I would get a new game for my Nintendo 64, I would still go back and play Super Mario 64 regularly. It was just so gripping. The environments are varied, and the way that a player is able to interact with them, thanks to the stellar control scheme, is unmatched in my opinion. Mario can pull off a variety of moves, utilizing lots of different button combinations, and mastering those moves always feels so satisfying. Even something as simple as the addition of the wing cap, allowing Mario to fly around in each of the levels, added so much more exploration to an already, at the time, huge game. Super Mario 64 really revolutionized the gaming industry, and became the template for countless games that followed it, and, I have to say, is to me, undoubtedly, the greatest game for the Nintendo 64. Hey everyone, thanks so much for checking out this video. I really, really appreciate it. What are your top 20 N64 games and what games did I miss? Please let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, feel free to check out some of my other stuff. 
I hope to do more videos like this and also like my top 20 Super NES videos in the future and other videos that I like to do such as game reviews and retrospectives of some of my favorite games. So please, if you're into that kind of thing, please feel free to give me lots of other recommendations for other videos you'd like to see as well. And I would love it if you joined our wonderful, friendly neighborhood Discord if you want to get deeper into what this channel's all about. Bye bye for now. Peace everybody.